guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're just going to do a radio install, nothing real exciting. Um, picked up a new Sony XAV AX1000 for this, for my 4Runner. This is a 2000 4Runner. Um, mainly I just wanted Apple CarPlay with uh, Gaia GPS mapping on here for off-roading. And uh, this was a really reasonable unit. It was only 250 bucks. These things are really coming down in price. Anyway, I figured I'd just kind of walk you through the install and I'll go from there. So I did order this from Crutchfield. I've been buying stuff from them for, well, probably about 20 years now. Back in the day, you used to have to actually get a catalog and call to order parts before we could order online. That's how long it's been. You know, so I've always been really, really happy with Crutchfield. Never had a problem with them. I like how they send the full wire harness adapter kit. They also send you PDF instructions on how to do the install if you uh, are unfamiliar with your car, which is super handy. Also, when you check out, they give you an option to buy some everything else you're going to need to do the install. Some, uh, in this case, just some wire harness connections and some uh, tools to help get the dash apart. All right, so one of the first steps is just to get this dash apart. Open up the center console, put your parking brake on, and then this trim assembly just pops out, I think. There we go, one of my clips stayed in place, so I'll pull that out. So there's that whole center console. You can see it just pops out. And then, See if I can get you a better spot for the front piece. This is usually the hard one because these things get brittle with age, these wooden trim pieces. So, got to be careful with them. There's a good chance you're going to break it when you're taking it apart if you're not really careful. So, disconnect my hazards up here, and my clock, which of course, if you know anything about these third gen 4Runners that are 20 years old, most of these don't work. Mine works once in a while, just randomly. You guys resituated here so you can see what I'm doing. So here's the plug for the hazards. I just unplugged that. There's one here for the clock. There we go. That's one for, that one's for the clock. I guess this one's a multi-mode. It's for the ECT, defrost, and rear window. And then the last one is just for your uh, Past your seatbelt light. Now down at the bottom you have several as well. These are for all your outlets, power outlets. All right, so there's just four screws that hold the, the factory radio in. And if you're not familiar with working on this stuff, you really should unhook the battery too. I normally I don't. It's good practice to do it just in case you short something out, but I've never had any issues knocking wood. Now we can kind of see what we have down here. So here's what was plugged into the radio. Looks like that goes to a factory amplifier down here. I 
Actually, looks like those are the two I need. All right, so that lines up just fine. You don't want to plug it in yet because some of these are still hot and you could short something out. That's why you should unhook the battery. <laughs> do as they say, don't do as I do. And this one is just a standard speakers. So that all looks good. Now we'll just unbox this Sony and see what we have. Remote control. There's a unit. Here is the wiring harness, parking brake signal, and hands-free calling. We will need to reuse the brackets from the side of the radio. So these things are, these kits, Crutchfield sounds are super nice because you can just, they're all color coded. So green goes to green, purple goes to purple. All right, so we have the wire harnesses done. Here's what it looks like. Everything's all tied together. So here's the plug for the new stereo. These plug into the factory Toyota plugs behind the dash. Super simple, super easy. Um, the one I don't have hooked up yet is this uh, parking brake. I'm gonna see if I need that. Hopefully I don't, but if I do, it's not a big issue. Carefully you don't do some damage while you're doing the testing. There we go. Test out Apple CarPlay one more time. Again, this one you have to have it USB plugged in for Apple CarPlay. Some of them are wireless. This one's just a cheaper $250. There's my maps came up. Audible, Pandora, everything's on there. And it sounds really good. I haven't even set any of the equalizers yet. All right, so everything works good. And you can see the screen's better now. I had my lights on, which so it automatically dims with the headlights on. You can see headlights on, headlights off. So I'm sure there's a setting for that someplace too. But I'll get this dash button back up and then we'll go from there. So initial impression, the sound is fantastic on this thing. Very user friendly. I'm not crazy about the home screen. I'm hoping I can change that. Um, once I find that out, I'll let you know. Visual, wallpaper. Dimmer, you can either have it on auto so it dims with the lights or you can set manually. Home button, actual volume knob, which I love. So that's gonna complete the install. Looks pretty clean. Um, so far I'm really happy with this thing. I love the volume knob. It feels like it's made very well. It's got a home button there. Obviously you have full Apple CarPlay with your maps. Pandora, uh, Audible, 
calendars, podcasts. I do listen to a lot of podcasts too, so that's nice. Um, Gaia GPS. So we should be set. And then of course my wireless calling, which is uh, which I use a lot too for work. So total install time, let's see what we're at here. I guess I do have to tuck this back behind this pillar yet, but that'll just take a few minutes. Well, we're at about an hour and 20 minutes, and that's with filming and moving the camera around and everything too, so you could probably pretty well do it in an hour if you wanted to.